Today on Steel Creek Explorer, we've left Steel Creek Park. Yes, I know this is Steel Creek Explorer and I'm your host, Jeremy Stout, but as I teased, we're not in Steel Creek Park. This is a place I've wanted to bring you to uh, for quite a while. This is one of Bristol's other large city parks. Uh, we're located just a stone's throw from Steel Creek Park, uh, but as you're about to find out in a moment, uh, as far as the nature is concerned, it's a world away from Steel Creek Park. Uh, White Top Creek Park is located right along 394, right across from the drag strip uh, near Bristol Motor Speedway. It's a 56 acre park that if Bristolians know it at all, they mostly know it for the soccer fields and the softball fields that you might see behind me. Uh, but as far as the natural history is concerned, uh, this is an entirely different habitat than we have at Steel Creek Park totally different plants and animals can be found here than I'm used to and the ones I'm used to sharing with you. So come along with me and let's explore White Top Creek Park. All right, well, this is the first of two different kinds of wetlands I'm gonna show you here at White Top Creek Park. And this is one that unfortunately gets a lot of bad publicity. This is a pond ecosystem. And unfortunately, a lot of people view a habitat like this and they think, oh my goodness, I, I'm getting bitten by mosquitoes just watching it on TV. But in reality, that couldn't be further from the truth. Yes, there are plenty of ponds and puddles of water that breed a lot of mosquitoes, but a healthy pond ecosystem like the one we have here at White Top uh, actually is a complete ecosystem. And so what that means is, yeah, you might have some mosquitoes laying eggs uh, inside this water, but you also have a lot of things living in that water that eat those eggs. And especially there are lots of predators in the sky who are going after those adult mosquitoes that are here to lay the eggs. What that means is right here standing just about in the middle of this pond, I haven't been bitten by a single mosquito. And let's take a closer look at the pond. There's something else here that also gets a bad rap. We'll take a closer look at. Well, covering this pond is something that gets a, a really bad reputation, and it's unfortunate because it doesn't deserve it. Uh, you might look at this green film covering the pond and you might say that that's algae, or even worse, you might call it pond scum. Uh, but in reality, neither of those things are, are accurate terms for what this is. Uh, this right here, growing on top of this pond, is actually predominantly duckweed, which is a flowering plant. Uh, that means it's, it's a broad-leafed plant. Uh, and this stuff, uh, yeah, it is only found in slow-moving bodies of water. It's not found in fast-moving water. Uh, but what it does do, it shades the aquatic environment. Uh, it takes carbon dioxide from the air and, and, you, and uh, uh, gives oxygen to the environment, uh, keeps the pond ecosystem cool, uh, provides a base of, of the food chain for a lot of the organisms living in this. Uh, I, there are few things that get as much hate as duckweed on a pond, and I've just never understood it. Uh, it doesn't cause a problem. It's a beautiful shade of green. Uh, it's, it's a vital part of this habitat. Well, this is a really cool find. I've never actually seen this before. Uh, now, there are some spiders that are capable of walking on water by using the surface tension of the water. Um, think of the, the better known water striders. Those aren't spiders. 
uh, but there are spiders that can do that, walk on water in a similar way. Not this guy. This little guy is one of the truly terrestrial spiders. It appears to be one of the grass spiders. Uh, probably can't uh, swim, uh, and yet here it is using the duckweed as a land. Uh, that means that this, this watery environment is also subsequently uh, sort of its own terrestrial environment for things that are very, very small. This little guy walking on the individual leaves of the duckweed uh, to, to use it just like it would land. Uh, just one of, one of the many reasons why duckweed does not deserve its bad reputation. Well, a lot of the predators of those mosquitoes uh, and other flying insects here include frogs. Lots and lots of frogs here in this pond at White Top. Uh, today I'm hearing bullfrogs. Uh, that's the largest frog native to our area. Uh, the big ones that have the low her, her, her. Uh, but we're also hearing and seeing green frogs. Uh, green frogs are large, uh, not quite as large as the bullfrog. Uh, and they have a distinctive sound that they make. They sound like a single strum on a low strung banjo. They just kind of go bow, or sometimes they'll go bow, bow, bow. And it sounds just like a, a low strung banjo. Uh, and there are several other species of frogs that we can find in this pond if we look closer. Well, what a great find. This is one of the less conspicuous and less often seen herons native to our area. You might be familiar with the great blue herons that stand uh, nearly five feet tall and are here all year round. This is a much smaller one. Uh, this is the green heron that's only here in the warmer months out of the year and migrates south during the winter. Uh, this is a great find uh, around wetlands uh, and especially here at White Top Creek Park, there are several places where you can see this species. Well, here is the other wetland at White Top Creek Park that's unique from the wetlands we have at Steel Creek. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Jeremy, you're standing on dry land. What kind of wetland is this? Uh, this is a special kind of wetland. This is, is a woodland wetland. Uh, you notice it just looks like I'm in the forest. Uh, but what this area is here, there are some hints uh, that this is a wetland habitat. Uh, like for instance, the uh, stinging wood nettle that's growing in front of me. There's spotted jewelweed growing around the edges. And there's lots and lots and lots of this right here. It looks almost like poison ivy growing as a tree. Uh, it has these leaves of three. It actually, if you look closely, it has leaves of five. This is not poison ivy. Uh, this is box elder maple, uh, which grows really well in moist soils. This habitat uh, is seasonally wet. It helps mitigate flood waters from the creek nearby when it swells. Uh, it's wet for some weeks or months out of the year, but mostly dry for others. And even though it's dry enough to walk on right now, uh, as I mentioned, there are lots of evidence that the ground is not as dry as it seems. Lots of uh, roly polies, uh, their real name is isopods, uh, little terrestrial crustaceans crawling all over the floor, uh, and maybe even uh, another wetland critter or two if we look closer. Oh, well here's a great little wetland find. This is a chorus frog. Uh, there are a couple of different species that can occur uh, here. Uh, this appears to be, it's a little tricky to tell, uh, but this is probably the upland chorus frog. Uh, this is one that you don't often see, so this is a special sight, but uh, you do often uh, know these by sound, even if you aren't familiar with their song. Uh, don't let the name chorus frog fool you. They, they don't have a very melodic sound, but it is quite distinctive. Uh, you hear this in the springtime. Uh, it's often likened to running your thumb uh, through a stiff bristled comb. Uh, it's a really loud and, and shrill and high-pitched uh, grating noise. It's, uh, it's not unpleasant to hear, but yeah, this is a, a great little find. Upland chorus frog. Here's a beautiful little butterfly. Oh, and lots of other pollinators on this as well. Uh, this right here appears to be one of the azures. We have um, two species of azure that uh, live around here. There are spring azures and summer azures. Uh, and you might be thinking, well, Jeremy, of course, it's summertime, so that must be a summer azure. 
uh, but not necessarily. The spring azures can have multiple broods in a single year. Uh, and so this time of year in late summer, uh, that could potentially be either species. Well, we've gone to the pond and we've gone into the woods, but when most people think of White Top Creek Park, this is what they think of. Wide open spaces like the soccer fields behind me and like the softball fields in front of me. This is what makes up most of White Top Creek Park. And even beyond the borders of the city park, there are uh, campgrounds and agricultural areas. That's what sets this apart from nearby Steel Creek. And the habitat is a whole world away. Lots of butterflies are nectaring on the soccer field behind me, including clouded sulfurs and morning cloaks uh, and beautiful wood nymphs. But what I really wanted to show you today, and unfortunately we couldn't find, is one of my favorite birds in the whole world, the American kestrel. It's a falcon. It's actually a small falcon, only about six or seven inches tall. I've never seen one in Steel Creek, but I've seen them fairly commonly here at White Top Creek Park. In fact, they even nest here uh, in the breeding season. It's a falcon of the open country, so if you don't have open country, you just don't find American kestrels. So we couldn't find those today, but I bet if we look around, we can find another critter or two of the open country. Ah, here's a classic critter of the open country. Uh, this is a groundhog, also called a marmot or woodchuck or whistle pig. Those are all the same, uh, different names for the same animal. Uh, this is the second largest rodent in North America next to the beaver, uh, which we also have here at White Top Creek Park. Uh, and these, of course, are, are burrowing rodents uh, that eat a lot of uh, plant and uh, vegetable material. Uh, a lot of people hate them because they, they dig really extensive burrows. And uh, if you're not watching where you're going, you can definitely twist an ankle in one of their holes. But uh, for the most part, if we leave them alone, they leave us alone. And uh, the damage they cause is usually pretty minimal cool find to see them out in the open. Well, whether it's White Top Creek, Steel Creek, or one of our 23 other parks, be sure to get out and explore Bristol, Tennessee's municipal parks, because here's where you can be the explorer. Yeah!